So welcome everyone to uh, the SAM Symposium 2020. Um, this is, uh, as, uh, just, just to be clear, this is a space analog for the Moon and Mars. And uh, this is our second event. Uh, last year, um, on, on roughly the same week, I think it was December 5th or 6th, there were about 15 of us, 12 or 15 of us, that met in person at the University of Arizona. We had another half a dozen or so join um, online. And that's really what set this whole thing in motion, is we got together and said, what do we want to accomplish in 2020? And uh, we talked about our, our goals of, of uh, the funding that we believed we might need and, and started <coughs> some opportunities there. And we, we came together to say that we, we've been working on the concept for almost a year, year and a half before that, but that was really the first time that we got together as a group and said, let's, let's set this in motion, let's see what we can accomplish. And later in the, in the day, I'll, I'll spend some more time describing um, what we've accomplished in the last year and, and all the things that we've done to date, which has really been spectacular, especially in the last three or four months. Um, but I welcome you to the, to the second symposium, and if we keep this up, we went from you know, roughly 20, 24 people. Today we have over 110 invites. We might be on our way to a proper conference um, you know, in a year or two, which would be really exciting. So with that, I have the pleasure of welcoming uh, Joaquin Rez, Dr. Joaquin Rez, who is the uh, University of Arizona's Vice President of Global Environmental Futures and Executive Director at Biosphere 2. And he's going to uh, open our session today. I will stop sharing, and Joaquin, it's uh, up to you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Kai, and uh, welcome, everybody. I am not going to take 15 minutes, as, uh, as Kai said all of you have. Uh, all I want to say is that, you know, the, um, the, the Biosphere 2 started with a dual sort of idea, and one of them was, was really try trying to understand at that point what the guy, if, if they could study and come up with a way of measuring what was a very important theory at the time, which was the Gaia hypothesis. That means uh, the earth being a, a, an organism and how it all worked that way. But the second one, of course, was uh, whether uh, the biosphere could create the intellectual properties to go to other planets. So uh, after a very complicated life that the biosphere has had, it's like you know, a cat with seven lives, uh, and all of them terrific. Uh, we are back to one of the original uh, one of the original missions of Biosphere Two, and that is how do we actually uh, feed the astronauts if we really are going to go to the moon for the long term or Mars for the long term, in particular Mars, but Moon for surely on its way. And it couldn't be a better time now. I mean, everything you read in the newspapers uh, it really points to uh, a, a race of uh, various countries to try to put astronauts on the moon. And that's not quite clear to me that any of them have really thought out uh, besides their rocketry uh, and, and you know, the safety of the, of the astronauts to get them there and back, um, how they're gonna live there for a long time. So Sam uh, is clearly a solution. And uh, Kai is a person that I met thanks to the gods of the good, good uh, luck. Uh, and uh, since he's been cranking away with Biosphere 2 and Sam, uh, it's been a joy to see movement progress, uh, not as fast as all of us would like, but movement in the right direction. And today's uh, presentation by Kai and, and uh, John, I think you'll all be impressed of how much uh, we've moved forward. So welcome. I'm very interested in listening to every single one of you and, and learning a lot about uh, the future of mankind in other planets. <laughs> 